Hello, good enthusiasts and aficionados. Our special guest for today, Clint Eastwood, alias Dirty Harry's favorite revolver. The one and only, the infamous drumroll. That's fifth and West End model, 29-2. There she is, in all her glory. Oh, heavy. All right, this is a uh, 29-2. Got the uh, chambered cylinder, pin barrel, and it is. It's a six inch barrel. When the 29 2 first came out in 1961, it was actually a six and a half inch barrel. And they changed it to six inches. From then on, they were all six inches. So this is a, a later model. From around 1961. Firing pin is on the hammer. It has a uh, the wide hammer spur, target hammer. It's got the wide target trigger, target trigger. And the target grips, those are the three T's. These aren't the correct grips, but these are nice grips. Very nice. Smith & Wesson original. Con cola alves. South American Redwood. Yeah, this is a nice gun, man. Solid, tight. Tight as a nun. Beautiful gun. What can I say about the 29 2 that hasn't already been said? You know, it's a movie star, it's the enforcer. But today we have a special guest on our show, all the way from Spain. This is. From Vitoria, España. It's the Lama Super Comanche in 44 Magnum. A very respectable revolver. The Comanche has a smooth trigger. Smith & Wesson has a serrated trigger. The firing pin is in the, in the frame. And I believe that is a hammer block, not a transfer bar. And the barrel is ribbed like the famous Python. It's a good looking revolver, heavy. It's crossed between a... <laughs> so if Model 29 and a Python got married, this would be their child. <laughs> 44 Magnum, recessed cylinder. No, it's not a pin barrel, but it is a recessed cylinder. 44 Magnum. Cylinder swings up, just like a Smith & Wesson. But this one has an additional feature, it has a detent right there. And the ejector rod, free floating, unlike the Smith. Smith has a little notch right there, a little catch right there. There's nothing in here. The new ones actually, this is a design that Dan Wesson started, I believe. Now the, the new Smith and Wessons have that also, that little thing. And this thing is in excellent condition. I mean, there's no folding in there. It's just, that's the finish is just exquisite. They did a really good job on these guns. So anyway, my point is you can find these things relatively inexpensively and it's, it's a great revolver. Whereas the 29, those things are gonna set you back over a grand, at least two grand maybe, if you find you know, a decent one. A thousand buckazoids. 
So I just wanted to compare these two. Let's measure the uh, cylinder on this one. Six inches. Six inches. Six inches. This one's a little shy of six, actually. A little bit shy of six inches. And this one is uh, also a little shy of six. It's got nice wooden grips. I guess that's walnut. Pretty much the same size. So the Lama Super Comanche and 44 Magnum, it was made by Lama Gabilando of Vitoria, Spain and imported by Stoker. Lama has been widely known for good 45 and 38 Super Autos and a fine line of conventional autos and revolvers in a wide range of calibers. Its big 44 deserves high marks for both innovative design and excellent overall quality. This is according to American Handgunner, 1983. When tuned, the Super Comanche combines ultra-fine accuracy with strength and easy handling, in spite of relatively heavy recoil. Really? I think this thing is not going to recoil much because it is heavy and is a stout mother. Doesn't feel as smooth as the Smithy, though. <laughs> you can't beat Smith and Wesson's action. I'm sorry. Maybe a stout gun. Probably handles the 44 Magnum well. But but it's hard to beat the Enforcer. Oh my God. This gun is so, so, oh God, it's like butter, like butter, uh. So smooth, so smooth. I'm gonna stage it. It's so easy to stage. So easy to stage. You know, I think the bluing on the, uh, the llama's a little nicer. And they're both nice. <sighs> 44 Magnum. I don't know if that gold lettering is from the factory or what. I thought about finishing it off, you know. But ah, the hell is it? I just left it alone. It's got the red insert for the front side. It's a little dirty. Need to clean that. Smith and Wesson, right there. Smith and Wesson. Beautiful finish. It has one little blemish right there. Other than that, it's really, really clean. No freckling. Look at that trigger. Jesus Christ Almighty. A trigger and a half. Ain't she a honey? I'm gonna get those other grips for it. The ones that Harry Callahan used. Checkered grips.
does that look like? Vagina. Twenty-nine dash two. It's a monster. There she is, my baby, and her cousin from Spagna, the Super Comanche, and the infamous model 29-2 from the famous Harry Callahan movies, starring Clint Eastwood. They made, uh, what, six of those movies? Dirty Harry came out in 1971, Magnum Force, 1973, The Enforcer, 1976, Sudden Impact, 1983, directed by Clint Eastwood, and then in 1988, The Deadpool. They kept getting more and more violent. This is a map of San Francisco, trialing Scorpio. Well, thanks for watching, and take care of your guns. They'll take care of you. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? To tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. But Ian, this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off. You got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk?